The countdown's on. Six days until the season opener in Montreal. The Leafs play their penultimate preseason game. First of a home and home against the Red Wings here in Detroit. And there's the Leafs starter tonight. Anthony Stolarz has allowed two goals in two preseason appearances. Expected to go the full 60 tonight. At the other end, it'll be Camp Talbot vying for the starter's job in the Motor City. 37 years of age now with his eighth team and he too likely to play the entire game. There's Patrick Keane beginning his first full season with the Wings after putting up 47 points in 50 games last year with Detroit. And the guys were talking about Nick Robertson who scored the Leafs' last three goals, including a game winner on Saturday night in Montreal. Your starting lineups are brought to you by Molson. Molson, everyone in. Derek Lalonde's team, 3-1-1. One and, one. and the Leafs, 2-1-1 one one in the preseason. And great, it's been a busy stretch for Detroit with six games in seven nights. Yeah, it sure has. And three in a row here coming up. And this home game here on a Thursday night, almost as the guys were saying, the starting lineup to begin the season. So a real test here for the Toronto Maple Leaf lineup that is less packed with NHL. David Camp starting at center. Here's a chance, and Rasmussen wired that, and it may have glanced off the glove of Stolarz. Andrew Kopp centering this line for Detroit. Stolarz trying to reach through to pick that off, and now we'll cover early pressure by what will be the third line for Detroit this season. Well, and you expect this from the Detroit Red Wings, you know, coming in with a lineup that they know they've been pressured by their coach to get the competition going. Lilgren here with just an errant pass that Pacioretty can't get a hold of. One quick pass and Rasmussen in good position, but you see the big body of Stolarz that 6-6, he came out aggressively and did a good job of not really giving him anything, getting enough of that with his glove. This will be a good night for Stolarz with an opportunity to get some tough looks against a strong team. Easton Cowan brings that in with McMahon trapped offside. Well, I think it's really intriguing here for Stolarz coming off a year last year where, you know, kind of under the radar, did a great job in Florida in stability, stabilizing the backup position. And that's what you look at here. Can he be a 1A or a backup guy to Joseph Wall or can he take the reins? And the experience he had last year was just exceptional. Under the radar, 203 is the best goals against average in the National Hockey League last year, and it belonged to Stolarz. He had the best save percentage as well at 925. Personal best 16 wins for Stolarz as that puck is iced by the Leafs at a faceoff back in the Toronto zone. Yeah, it's interesting too as Joseph Wall has only played what just over 31 wow. minutes of that game one and here we are with just one exhibition game left on Saturday against these Detroit Red Wings too. So lots of decisions to be made and that's what makes this game on the road intriguing against the tough opponent. Marco Casper on the draw for Detroit. He's made some noise in training camp and flanked by Keane and Tarasenko. Here is Casper playing it behind the net. Keane looking to center for Tarasenko. And now the Leafs will move it ahead and out with Bobby McMahon flipping it deep. And in on the four check. There's Justin Hall, the former Leaf, in his second year as a Red Wing through center. Casper onto the right side. Tarasenko had it knocked off his stick by Cedric Paré, who made some noise in Montreal. On Saturday, McMahon looking to get off the ice, dumps it back into Detroit territory. Olimata swings past Paré and out to center. Red line and in for Detroit. After Joe Valeno. Knocked down was Lilligren. There's Grabacon, who was the talk of the Muskoka trip, apparently. <laughs> apparently, he's a fun guy. It has certainly made some fans in his preseason. I, I love the pulling out the translator to try to get his point across to his, his teammate, so talking about a good sense of humor. And geez, another opportunity to show you belong in the NHL here with an opportunity to play a big role in this game. Gally Arncroke was out on the ice on that last shift as he returns for the first time in the preseason since the opening game. Timothy Lilligren sizes things up. All the bets on the blue line in this game. And 
Nice it called. He didn't get to the red line, although he doesn't agree with the call. Yeah, he's just about a foot there, wasn't he? He was trying to get off, so Lilgren just anxious to get in. Now he's going to say, oh, I got to wipe my visor off. That gives him a little opportunity to catch a breath. He's been about a minute shift there and an opportunity as a veteran guy in this lineup on the back end. He's got the most games played in the National Hockey League for the six defensemen in for the Leafs now. Here comes Alex Nylander onto the left side. Alex Steves ridden off the puck. He had a goal in the second preseason game. A loss against the Senators. In the middle it goes and over the line onto the right wing. Christian Fisher couldn't reach that. Miko Kokonen will play it ahead and the Leafs break out. Pass missed by Nylander and Andrew Kopp comes back in. Tried to get it across onto the left wing. That was broken up but now the Leafs start back. And ready had it knocked off his stick by Ben Sherratt. Sherratt on a different pairing usually with Mo Sider but tonight Sider will be paired with the rookie defenseman Simon Edmondson who finished last year with the final 14 games for Detroit. And there's a puck onto the shoulder of Talbot who holds on. Well, you look at the back end here for the Detroit Red Wings veteran Jeff Petrie. It just playing aggressive here. Watch to the outside. Steve just reaches for him. I think Steve's a little surprised at the physical play there as Petrie ends up getting the fist to the uh, to shoulder and knocks him down. Is, does a good job of winning that battle and getting the puck back, going back the other way. So Camp Pacioretty and Robertson tonight. There's Alex Dabrinkit. Now through center. Uh, Pass for Debrinkit, cruising in. Shot was muffled there. Keith Weber there defensively. In of the top seven, at least on the depth chart right now, Timothy Lilligren, the only defenseman among that group in the lineup tonight. And maybe getting challenged by some young defensemen. I think a guy that really watches Rafai, too. He's been really talk of the Toronto Maple Leaf camp and a couple of games in the National Hockey League but for Marshall Fry to get an opportunity to play with Lilligren get some good matchups you, you see the Larkin line out there for the Detroit Red Wings I mean those are the kind of things that you don't necessarily get in a regular season game and that's what the coaches want to see how do you handle that kind of skill and now going out with Patrick Kane and Tarasenko on the outsides as well that, that's a good challenge for him to be noticed. Third game for Rafai, who dropped the gloves with Uri Slavkovsky in a rather robust Saturday night in Montreal. Keen unable to move it past Rafai, pinching in on that left side. It'll be dumped down the ice by Tarasenko. Back is Lawrence, sending it ahead, and Easton Cowan will turn in his own zone. Nice pass ahead for McMahon, who had trouble corralling it. Edmondson and McMahon go down. Puck came out in front. Pare there. And the back official making a call in the first penalty upcoming. Yeah, I think the arm actually went up after the turnover happened. It looked like they were going to allow that battle going into the corner with Edmondson. And the, two minute minor for the slash came after. Yeah, well, watch the physical battle here. Reaching out. No call coming here. It's afterwards the play. I don't really see a slash, but I, I think it was one of those instances, Chris, where all of a sudden the Leafs get a good scoring chance and the arm came up late. No arm was up there, and I think he thought the slash into the hands of Mo Sider, which created the chance, ended up being the call. Kyle Raymond, Mike Sullivan, the referees for tonight's game. Tyson Baker, Devin Berg on the lines. And so. The Red Wings 3 for 21 on the power play against a leaf penalty kill that has been perfect in the preseason. And an area of, of focus coming in to be better than last year when they were tied for 22nd. David Camp out to start the kill along with Kelly Yarncroke, so a couple of veterans there. Kokonen and Myers on the back end to bring it back to Sider, across for Kane. Lucas Raymond parked in front. There's a block by Myers, and the Leafs able to clear. Oh, he's hobbling off there, but just a great read by Myers. 
took away the shooting lane as that pass came flying across. He's going limping down into the Leafs dressing room as the play goes on. That's the sixth walk in the preseason for Philip Myers in his third game, early in his third game, and now Rafai sends it 200 feet. That was a good test, too. I mean, that power play basically is the Detroit Red Wings power play. So, you know, really going to be tested in this game. And for Craig Berube, that's exactly what you want to see. Put guys in a situation that they regularly don't get the opportunity to have. There's Valeno. Jonathan Berggren comes out. He's trying to make an impression and stay with the big team. Pass for Berggren. Broken up as Nick Robertson got a stick on that. Did he hustle to force Petrie back behind his own net? Yeah, take the opportunity too. Nick Robertson getting that little extra time. And that was just a smart read anticipating where that pass was going to go. So Robertson's now over six minutes of penalty kill time in the preseason. Just over one minute of penalty kill time all of last year. Rasmussen around. There's Tarasenko. Final 10 seconds of the power play. Kept in at the line by Petrie. Back to Tarasenko. Rasmussen from the corner. He had to register a shot. That one is steered away by Stolarz as McMahon returns to the ice. And Bobby McMahon starts out. Here's McMahon just dumping it down into the corner past Mata. Sent around to Petrie. Off the boards and ahead for the Red Wings as Foley Mata dispatches it to the league territory. Kofi Nibla. Here's Cowan. It'll be picked up here by Lawrence trying to send it ahead for McMahon. Nearly put the clutch there on Justin Hall. McMahon up with it again trying to center and Hall denied that. Lawrence with it. Cowan along the boards. Flicks it back behind the Detroit net. Talbot scoops it back. And there's a shot deflected in front. Off McMahon and picked up by Hall. That was another good read by Rafai, though. He's not afraid to stay in and hold his ground. And he anticipated, got in, and almost created the scoring chance. Alex Steve backhands it in. Three strong years with the Marlies and trying to make the next step. Big Edmondson, six foot six. Gives it away. Here's Quillen with it to that shot block. As Edmondson got in the way. Another shot by Quillen. This one gets through to Talbot. Red Wings started with eight goaltenders in camp. Down to seven. Including former Maple Leaf netminder Jack Campbell. But it looks like a three-man race for the starter job. A pass in front. Stollers to save. Edmondson fired it wide. Now Dylan Larkin's got it. Patrick Kane back to Larkin. Back for Kane. It was behind him. Here's Kane turning back. Forced back by Lilligren. Kokanen behind the net with Tarasenko there. Bumped along the boards by Casper. Casper, a native of Innsbruck, Austria. The number eight pick in 2022. As the puck is sent out of play. Red Wings get a chance here and Anthony Solars with his best stop so far. There's a weekend the unfortunate hit on Patrick Line who made a statement today that uh, I thought should uh, extinguish some of the hysteria involving the play in fact he even took some responsibility for that unfortunate hit and uh, we wish Line A well and uh, and he appreciated the text from Paré after the game. I think that's really kind of representative of what happened, too. I think Line does have to take some responsibility. And, you know, for Paré, here you are trying to make a hockey team. You haven't played an NHL game. You're, you're killing a penalty. You know, there's just so many factors going into your head. The last thing he was thinking was, I'm going to stick my knee out on this guy. I think it is just the situation presented itself so quickly. And good for Line to have that sportsmanship to take some responsibility. Obviously devastating for the Montreal Canadiens. I think the excitement with Line getting there and we all wish him a fresh start yep. from what's been a difficult time for him. So very disappointing. Well, there's good news. Phil yeah. Myers back after the block shot. Well, he was limping pretty hard yeah. going off and that early shot that knocks you down like that. You got to just find a way to shake it off. You know you're going to get your chance to to play some big minutes in tonight's game. 
Cubs. Think about how special that game would have been for Paré first in game Montreal. in Montreal in an NHL uniform, and it well, all went wrong in a hurry. He played just under 13 minutes, but you have to think because his head was just spinning the rain or that game. It happened so early on, and the last thing you want to do is injure a guy the way that it happened. So good for him for handling it, and hopefully going forward, Line A will get an opportunity to get back sooner rather than later. Three months a long time, but uh, that was good news compared to what everybody was expecting out of the prognosis for the Line A knee injury. David Camp on the left side. Here's Pacioretty. A lot of talk about how many games there are. Too many preseason games in a lot of people's view. Max Pacioretty says, give me as many as you can as he tries to get back into NHL form. Yeah, interesting. Uh, his comments, too, at the last game he played, he says, I just kind of lost my legs a little bit, too. And you remember getting into the middle of training camp you have so many hard practices and big skates and when you haven't been in and playing at the top level for really a year year and a half he just said yeah I, I feel much fresher now a little bit of a break and obviously going up north the last couple of days and getting some off ice work as well it just makes him feel a lot fresher and this is his opportunity to continue to shine down but a stop on that shot by Timothy Lilligren we're scoreless in Detroit Last year's starting goaltender Billy Huso played only 18 games, so Steve Eiserman wants to make sure the goaltending position is solidified. Camp Talbot, two years, $5 million. Alex Lyon was a key guy down the stretch, and Huso kind of put his stake in the ground last night with a 43 save performance in a 2 1 win over Pittsburgh, so. There's some competition for the goaltending job in Detroit. Yeah, such a frustrating year last year for Huso getting injured December 18th and this sort of changed everything. Lyon became such an important part of keeping this team. I mean, they were tied with the Washington Capitals with 91 points and lost in the tiebreaker to not make the playoffs. But if it weren't for Lyon and his efforts in the 44 games he played, now you're looking and saying Talbot is another guy though you look at personalities, and if you're going to have a backup, much like Stollers on the other side, can you get along with the guy? Can you be a good partner? And I think the one thing Calvin Talbot has done exceptionally throughout his career is be a really good teammate. I point the 42 win season with the Edmonton Oilers back in 16 17. Much traveled and good numbers last year in LA, yeah. except in the postseason when. Connor McDavid and company went to work on it. Yeah, him. tough task there with the Oilers and again LA having to go through Edmonton. Rasmus and across it ricocheted in front. Caught. Tried to go back to Fisher and it didn't work. And the Leafs work it ahead. Too far for Nimola. Teams are changing as Hamilton Nate of Ben Sherratt back in his own zone. Up for Lucas Raymond, who really led the charge down the stretch for Detroit last year as they came that close to making the postseason. Raymond with 11 points in the last six games. It's Raymond in front. Good poke check there by Stolarz. And out the other way comes Steve. Trying to work his way around Chirac, who wouldn't let him by. Following up, it's played back to the line for Myers. Myers bounces it in front and pinballed towards Steve. Kicked it for Nylander, and he was unable to get control of that. Lurking ahead, nice pass on the tape. It's Raymond dangling in the leap zone. That went off the official. An outlet there, and Kokonen's got it. Onto the wing for Nylander, who chops it ahead. And out to center, Alex Nylander in his third preseason game. Steves and Raymond getting at it, trying to get on their benches, kind of chopping at each other. I mentioned Derek Lalonde saying the, the competition, so he's got to line up a pretty strong one. But you go back to Monday, Chris, the Pittsburgh Penguins came in here with a non-NHL lineup against a very similar stack lineup of this Detroit Red Wing team, and the Penguins won 5-1. And, you know, it's been a really tough 
training camp, Alon has prided himself on really pushing these guys hard and pushing towards getting off to a good start to try to get that playoff position again. And I bet the challenge was pretty hard. Hey, you can't allow a team that doesn't have an NHL drifted lineup come into your building and lose again. And, and that seems to happen in exhibition time. You never know. It's not always what's on paper. It's how the guys play. And time's a ticking for that game one. Imagine in the summer how many times you replayed games where there might have been just one more point available. Yeah, and the amazing thing is, you know, they had more wins than Washington, 41 to Washington's 40. But the tiebreaker is the regulation and overtime wins, and it was 32 to 27 for Washington. It, that has to drive you nuts and really motivate you this year to make sure that doesn't happen again. And for Bacon setting it in, he got knocked down on the play. Mata and Hall start the breakout for Detroit. Keen's on the move. Here's Keen down that left flank. Finding Tarasenko, the shot blocked. Those two teammates with the Rangers. Keen on it again. Back across for Mata. Grabenkin gives him a shove. Keen take it, takes it away from Grabenkin. Back to Mata and Tarasenko. Keen up top. Holy Mata moving in. Two-time cup winner in Pittsburgh. There's Keen, a three-time cup winner across Tarasenko, Solars, a hot glove stop off another cup winner, Vlad Tarasenko. Yeah, how about that? Two teammates looking at each other there as he kind of smiled as soon as he got it, as did Tarasenko. What I want to show you, though, is Keen. Hey, watch Keen, just the patience, brings three guys, actually four guys to him, and you don't think in practice these two have done this time and time again, Tarasenko? Stolar's down, and he knew exactly where he was going, and I love that look. I mean, you always remember, especially guys you want a Stanley Cup with, it's just such a strong bond. And Tarasenko coming from Ottawa last year, he played a good role in that push to the Stanley Cup for the Florida Panthers, and you could see just the joy there for Stolar's to get that one. Ah, that was good stuff. And the guys in the pregame show showed that nice meeting at center ice before the game in the warm-up between Stephen Lawrence and Tarasenko. You know all about it. Once you win the cup, that bond is forever, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, it's hard to even explain. You just go through, go through so many moments that are just galvanizing and special and testing yourself. And I just love that interaction there as the games go on, especially in an exhibition game where it doesn't really matter. There's a penalty coming up against Edmondson. Robertson's gone to the bench and we'll watch that. He had, he had Cider in the spin cycle and uh, I think took a slash on the wrist or hand, but we'll see the league power play for the first time. Well, there's nothing more rejuvenating than a power play opportunity, and we'll the see. Leafs are going to get it here. So if I'm able to just block it all, yeah, there you go. You get back on. It's amazing how quickly it, it was an awkward little play, and you're right, he was shaking that left shoulder. So we'll watch here if that has any effect at all. Did he get hit coming around? A little spinorama does a nice job of protecting it. And then right there, oh yeah, his arm went up as he was trying to brace himself. He got hit at the same time. And I'm sure it, stre it stressed that joint. But he's out there for the start of the power. It's been a special night for him. His family moved to Northville, Michigan when he was a youngster. And still summers in the state of Michigan. So likely to have family and friends here as it's dumped down the ice by Easton Cowan. Cowan taken out by Petrie. Loose puck is picked off by Casper, kept in initially by Nemola, then played deep by Andrew Kopp. Another big physical play by Petrie, too. We've seen a couple of times defensively. Cowan thought he had some time to make a play and stop up, and a good physical hit by Petrie knocked him down and turned the puck over. So Nimala will quarterback the power play as he did with the Marlies last year. Alex Steves is in. He takes a bump along the board by Hall. Puck loose and Red Wings going to skeet away with it. Rasmussen on his off wing challenging and Puck played away by Stolarz. Detroit has killed 16 of 18. They're 88.9%. Leafs the best penalty killers in the preseason. Detroit is fourth. Alex Nylander over the line. Nylander gets it back. Plays it back for Lilligren. And across Steves. That shot is blocked 
And Hall clears. Half minute remaining in the Edmondson penalty. 440 to go here in the opening period. There's Lawrence. Myers steps up to Myers deep in the Detroit zone. Rather goes for Christian Fisher. Sider with a shoulder check. Got it to Sherratt, and he'll bounce it down the ice. Shot 6-3 Detroit. As we approach the 16-minute mark of the period, no shots for Toronto on their first power play of the night. Pare on the board check, played to the line. Kept in by Weber. Pare takes over, and he'll swing it back in. Pare had 88 points in his last junior year as he was a teammate of Alexi Lafreniere. Dylan Larkin to work. His pass broken up by Pacioretty. And Robertson tries to take off. Trying to shift gears there on Edmondson, who was able to make the play defensively. Off Raven nearly back onto the stick of Robertson. And now Edmondson onto the right side. Here's Raymond. Two goals for Raymond in the preseason so far. Edmondson. To bring it back to the line. Larkin up top. It'll come back to Maurice Sider. Missed the first four days of training camp and then signed a seven year, $59.85 million contract. Boy, oh, they didn't grab it off to 60, yeah, but exactly. they didn't. Uh, the, the, the big signings, obviously, Mo Sider and then Raymond uh, for Steve Eisenman. That was sort of the two big checks. They had to check the box to get ready for the start of the season. Kane's going to get a penalty here as he had an errant stick that ends up with a trip. So another power play coming up for the Maple Leafs. 242 remaining first period. There's the penalty on Kane. maybe in the penalty box right now but a few moments ago we saw that elite playmaking ability on full display as he almost connected with Vladimir Tarasenko for a goal two guys who careers have intersected at many different points a lot of great battles in that St. Louis Chicago rivalry and then there was a time when Patrick Kane wasn't exactly the happiest to see the Rangers acquire Tarasenko thinking that maybe it took away his opportunity to get to New York but ultimately the two did spend a year together for a short stint and they're reunited here in Detroit. Kane, a big part of recruiting Tarasenko, says a lot about what having a high-end guy like Kane can do when it comes to acquiring high-end talent, guys. Looks like they're gonna play together. It would likely be JT Comfer, yet Nate Danielson, a first-round draft choice from a couple of years ago, has really made a lot of noise in camp. They've even got praise from Patrick Kane. It's Casper tonight, and it's the Leafs on their second power play. Cowan's pass for Nivola, broken up. Andrew Kopp down the ice, centering it. He was looking for Casper, and Robertson gets back and starts the Leafs the other way. Good play by Nick Robertson on the back track. Now they'll get set up with Pacioretty, trying to spin it back to the line. He got tied up by Kopp. Robertson gets it loose, finds Cowan. Gets it back, Robertson scores! Nick Robertson has four straight Leaf goals in the preseason. And Toronto leads 1-0. Wow, you want to make an impact on a coach. It, it, okay, one way is doing that, putting it in the back of the net, but it's the play away from the puck that really is the difference maker. It allows you to get this opportunity, and that's what everybody's focus has been on Robertson. He does a great job of getting inside, turning the puck over, and getting it back on the offensive zone. And how about this combination? Easton Cowan, Pacioretty keeps the play alive, gets back, a no-look pass, and then Cowan looks like he's gonna shoot, slides it across, and Nick Robertson has that ability of a one-shot that can beat a goaltender. You know, his last few that he scored has been along the ice in five hole. This one just off the ice, over the pad, underneath the blocker. And there it is, as you mentioned, his fourth trial make the lead goal in a row. From that spot, with that much time, maybe only 34 and 88 are more lethal than Nick Robertson with a look like that. And now the Leafs come back with Bobby McMahon swinging wide. Sider blew a tire and a centering pass. And a close call as that one tipped by Kelly Yarncroft. 
far. Just a great read there by Cantal, but wasn't able to get his stick to stop the pass, but anticipated where the shot was going to come from. You get vision on where the threat is and look at tight to the post, but then had the glove in great positioning as Yarn Croak with the stick on the ice. Tap, tap, tap. Wanted it, couldn't quite get it high enough, but that's an excellent read by Talbot to get the glove in the right position to make a nice save. Our good friend John Garrett always talks about key saves at key times. That comes right after a leap goal to keep the Red Wings within one. A spectacular stop by Talbot. All up to Kane, who was in the box as the Leafs scored the power play goal. Joe Valeno spins back. His shot off the right pad of Stolars. Blake Myers, Kokonen. Up ahead, Lawrence, he'll steer that out. Lawrence playing center tonight, has played wing in the first two preseason games. Showing you his versatility, but goes off Hall, loose at center. Here comes Nylander, and across, but unable to stay on side was Alex Steves. Well, if you're gonna be a useful player to a new organization the, the ability to play center is really key I mean everyone you need as many centermen as you can but you also have to be able to play up and down the lineup and that, that's one thing that Steven has really taken pride of throughout his career and you know just living the experience of being in the Stanley Cup and playing through all the big games there it just can't help but give you the confidence as a player that you know you can contribute and I, I think this has been a good fit for him I think Brad for living has been really impressed with his abilities as well I, I think it will be a good fit for him to be a part of this group well they able to swap that out Jacob Cullen icing the puck playing in his fourth preseason game well, Quillen's another guy, too. You know, a great player in Quinnipiac, won the national championship, the overtime goal, and another guy who can play center, and he was best defensive forward in his college days. And, you know, there's the combination. You got the ability to play big games and score big goals, but also the versatility and trust to play a defensive role, and that's what every coach is looking for. Petrie with the shot right on. That'll stick to Stolarz. With a little commotion in front, Marco Casper is steered away from the front of the net. You know, what you see with Anthony Stolarz here, he just looks like, you know, as visually as a shooter, you're trying to find holes. You know, one thing, you, you can't make yourself bigger. A 6'6 six, six is going to help you take up a lot of net. But, but watching him play, the calmness that he has, the ability to track the puck in those situations, he, he doesn't seem to be panicking at all. And I just think that his ability to come in here and again be another calm presence in the crease will be of high value here for the Maple Leafs this season. Now a 30 year old veteran, seven years in the league, not a lot of game action. Clock winds down here in the opening period. One last chance maybe, and that one knocked out in front. And the horn sounds to end the opening period. Well, he remains hot in the preseason. Nick Robertson making his case. A power play goal at 17.54. Easton Cowan and Max Pacioretty with the assist. Nine stops for Stolarz. Our first intermission with David Amber and company coming up. It's 1-0 Leafs. Nick Robertson's been lighting it up of late. In fact, four preseason goals in this, his fourth preseason game. Prolific goal scorer in the OHL and seems to be continuing that trend as he tries to make this Leafs team. Yeah, I think what was on the first period is everything that's tantalizing about him and maybe a little bit scary. But if uh, Craig Berube can build other things into his game beside the goal scoring, he becomes a really valuable player. And they put him on the penalty kill. Here he is with a good stick in the lane, and he hounds the puck after that. We saw him with some good cutbacks and creating space for himself. What scares me is this. He takes a little bump, and then the arm's like, uh-oh. You know, he has a tendency to get hurt, but got to the bench, he shook it off, he went back out there on the power play and did exactly what we'll see in a minute here. This is also another great back check, so he's really showing a well-rounded game, but this is the thing that's gonna keep him in the NHL 
power play guy. When he gets a look, he can shoot it in the net. Not many people can. We've seen this all preseason. So, yeah, there's something there with this guy. Uh, he's going to stick around. All right. Well, he's trying to make a case. The, the challenge will be now moving forward. Where's the fit in terms of quality ice time? Mm -hmm. Getting some looks on the power play. Are you going to pull back some of the, the minutes or ice time of your big boys to start fitting him in. How much of a difference will it feel for Nick Robertson this time around from last year in the past? We know he can score. Mm -hmm. The question is, where's the true fit come Wednesday night? Mm -hmm. How do you facilitate his skill set, of course? Uh, meanwhile, Anthony Stolarz, this is his fifth team. He's not a young guy at all, uh, 30 years of age, but this could be the best opportunity he's had yet in the NHL, isn't He's it? young compared to all of us. I <laughs> True enough. Look, this is a great game for Stolarz tonight because they don't have a good lineup, and he's out there and he's battling and he's playing excellent, including the one big save. The thing about Stolarz is, as good as Joseph Wool is, he gets hurt. So if you're Stolarz... You could be the number one guy for a chunk of the year if Wool can't stay healthy. So, you know, I really like this performance tonight, but the thing with Tarasenko was hilarious, where he just gives him the big grin after making this save. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just, and Tarasenko laughing too. Tarasenko's having a hilarious night, yucking it up with Lawrence in the pregame too, all the guys he won the Stanley Cup with, but... I like this for Stolers because he's playing behind a team that should get clobbered by Detroit. Yeah. We had we had Steve Aliquette on our show today, Real Kipper and Bourne. For those of you that didn't catch it, uh, download it because he he's sure. great. He's great, and he talked about where you where some guys are mentally in terms of their comfort zone on where they see their fit best. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if Stolarz is ready for the challenge of maybe being a number one goaltender in a market like Toronto. He's waited patiently. 24 starts last year, the most he's ever had in a season. He'll eclipse that, we think, this year. Let's get you back out uh, to Little Caesars Arena. Sean McKenzie standing by. You mentioned him with Steve Lawrence. Stephen, the regular season is fast approaching. You have a few preseason games under your belt. I'm curious, just what have you learned about this group and what type of role you could fit in and, and play on this team? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of similarities to the team I was with last year in Florida. And obviously, you know the success we had there. And um, there's a lot of that young talent here and guys that are pushing for spots. And that healthy competition's good. Only drives all guys to be better. So uh, you can see it night in and night out. The guys are playing really hard and uh, guys are fighting for spots. So uh, it's good to see. We're off to a good start here tonight. We just got to keep going. Speaking of Florida, Anthony Stolarz, you know him really well. He made an incredible save in that first period on Vladimir Tarasenko. For Leaf fans who maybe are still getting to know him a little bit more, what should they know about Anthony? Uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, he's one of my great buddies and such a such a classy character guy and just so down to earth and humble. You never know. He was a, a hockey player and a really, really good one at that. Uh, you know, he's so calm and collected. And, and when he's away from the rink, he's just the most laid back guy. So I think that helps him on the ice. He's just kind of relaxed in the paint. And, you know, he's not in there flopping around. He's just square and steady. And uh, you could see it on uh, that save on Vladdy there. Obviously a world-class shooter. And Soli was in the middle, and he, I think he added a little flair there to, to go with it. So Vladdy came back to the bench smiling, and I think uh, Soli gave it to him a little bit, and I did too. Stephen, thanks so much for the time. Yeah, thank you. All right, great interview there. Very likable guy. Called Elliot Mr. Friedman during the Stanley Cup final. Mm. We'll have to well, I am much. 25 years older than him. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, all right, guys, this is exciting for us because the Atlantic Division, uh, it's it's – the most intriguing division in all of hockey. It really is, right? You had the Stanley Cup champs come out of there last year. Four teams eclipse at least 98-plus points. How's it all going to shake down? Because you have a bunch of teams that are hoping to break into the playoffs at the bottom of this division and some stud teams at the top there. Well, let's start with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Still a lot of question marks just in terms of how it plays out with second-line center, how it plays out with the, more, uh, with the new depth on the blue line, and, and of course, goaltending. So maybe there might be... Uh, a situation where the Leafs don't get off to a great start only because they're working towards a new system from Craig Berube may t take some time. Guys, in the Atlantic Division, I don't see it much different than I saw it last year. No. And while there may be uh, an ability for the Ottawa Senators to push closer towards meaningful games, I don't see it much different from uh, this, this coming season to what we saw at the end of April. Let me ask you guys a question. If Swayman doesn't start the year, mm -hmm. what do you think of the Bruins? I just think that's a really good team. That decor is rock solid still. Like, I, I don't know how you feel about Corpus Allo. Maybe it makes you a little nervous, but behind Carlo and uh, McAvoy, they just have a good group there. I don't think they're falling out. I, I think they're a really good team, but they gave up more chances last year than we got used to. Yeah. And, you know, Allmark, you're going from, if he doesn't start, Allmark Swayman, you're going from them as a tandem to what? Corpusalo Busi or Corpusalo Patera? So they're out. Who's in then? 
I like Ottawa this year. I'm already on record as picking <laughs> yeah. Ottawa. I can't go backwards. Is now. Allmark ready to be a, a I think a, Allmark's gonna be a big difference. So you like Ottawa. Nick likes it the same four that got in last year. What about you, Justin? Well it's funny, Detroit actually had enough points to get in last year. They yeah. lost on the tiebreaker the, to Washington. The empty net goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I no one's mentioned Buffalo. Buffalo's D is Darlene, Power, Byram. Uh, Samuelson, like, that's a good decor. I'm not sure that they're not a team that's going to sniff around, too. So. A goaltending issue there as yeah. well. UPL's pretty good. I like five, five teams from the Atlanta. Five from yeah, the Atlanta. I, I do. Year. It's so yeah. strong. It's going to be a great season. Of course, uh, it'll be interesting. Detroit very much in that mix as well. Uh, you mentioned the Boston Bruins. You mentioned Jeremy Swayman. No Swayman, but there is a Jonas Corposalo sighting in Beantown tonight. Full highlights coming your way from around the league. Keep it locked here on Sportsnet. Ceremonial puck drop for his former team, the Boston Bruins. David Pasternak, Philippe Stanneau. The uh, draw there, and right now, no scoring. I can tell you, Corpus Solo, and he might be called on. They've already said he's going to start the season opener for the Bruins. A lot of pressure on him. It didn't work out well in Ottawa. Can he turn things around in Beantown? How about Pittsburgh and Columbus? Take 64 or go. Oh, boy. <laughs> Neely's winning. The heat is on. A little give and go. Kent Johnson and Sillinger. And Columbus is going to need these young guys to step up. And so far, so good. one nothing over the Penguins there. And let's check out the Devils and the Flyers. So many big expectations for the Devils. This is some rough stuff, though. Samuel Laberge and Sawyer Bolton. And Laberge gets the best of Bolton. Ooh. 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 Yeah, well, Bolton left the game. I don't, I don't like to see that, but Bolton left the game. Uh, Ryan Schmelzer. <laughs> Gary's the one-timer. Is he making the lineup? I I don't know. I'm a big Schmelzer guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he found the twice. He's wearing it. He's wearing a letter. Did they dress tonight? I don't know. Uh, all right. Meanwhile, the Calgary Flames. A PTO former Leaf. Tyson Berry. Congratulations. From PTO to a Calgary Flame. One year. 1.25 million. Uh, is gonna be helpful on a blue line. Remember that lost Tanev and Zadorov and I'm forgetting some guys, but they, they lost real NHLers. He is one. <laughs> all right, so it all gets going for real on Tuesday night. We're gonna have a double header for you, starting with the unveiling of the Stanley Cup Championship banner down in South Florida. It's the Panthers and the Bruins at seven, followed by the first ever game by Utah's hockey club against Connor Bedard and Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey. Look at this. Six Canadian teams in action, starting out with the Leafs and Habs. Some bad blood brewing there. Uh, a fantastic way to start the season. It's all coming for you right here on the Sportsnet family of networks. Second period's next. Nick Robertson giving the Leafs a 1-0 lead through 20. Hockey. It all begins with Hockey Central at 6.30 Eastern, followed by three all-Canadian matchups. Maple Leafs taking on the Habs in Montreal, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Calgary, Vancouver as the late games. Yes, a new season for the Maple Leafs and the same sky-high expectations and pressure. In fact, Brad for Living was recently on the Spit and Chip with podcast where he talked a little bit about that pressure and what it's like to work in Toronto, saying there's a little coffee shop I go to near where I live. When I first went in there, an old guy was sitting there and he recognized me, he started talking to me and was really pleasant. But at the end of it, he just looks at me and says, hey, I don't have much time left. Yes, the pressure is on in Toronto. Chris Cuthbert and Craig Simpson with the call of the second, guys. He probably hears that every time he goes out for coffee, huh? It's true, though. You know, just the excitement of starting another year, but you know so much of the focus with this Leaf team. It's the postseason. So the challenge for Craig Berube is to, to just navigate through the regular season, try to grow this group together, and try to change that narrative come playoff time. I mean, look what this team has done. Four straight 100-point seasons in full 82-game years, 54-50 regular season win it, it, it's all about how they're going to pr produce come playoff time. Christian Fisher testing Stolarz early in this second period as linemate Michael Rasmussen with four shots of the nine for Detroit in the first. Well you've got to think Derek Lalon saying to his team OK come on we, we were a little bit flat there you gave up the power play goal got to get some tempo to your game it's hard to create it this is not a full building obviously an exhibition game lots going on around Detroit here as yes the excitement of the Tigers the last couple of days have really captured this downtown area and we should say for the Chamber of Commerce the downtown area 
What a revitalization as Stolar stopped it, dropped it. Pacioretty got a stick on it, and Robertson able to clear an anxious moment in front of the leaf net. Here's Moritz Sider onto the left wing. Rasmussen will play it back in, but line for Detroit, their third line has been good tonight. Robertson had it knocked off his stick by Petrie, who's been noticeable for the Red Wings. The Brinkett plays it back in. There's David Camp. Larkin takes Koken into the end boards, but it's picked up there by Quillen. And Pacioretty at the end of a shift. Excuse me, that was Camp. Now Robertson starts the change. Myers, Raymond. There's Lucas Raymond trying to work the way from Kokanen. It'll be picked off by Cowan, an assist in the first period. Easton Cowan looking for his first goal of this preseason. Went down and tumbling over him with Sherratt. Puck to the line, and here's Rafai sending it off the blocker of Talbot. Into the corner, McMahon goes after it. Trying to take it away, it comes to Cowan. Trying to twist away from Raymond, a nice pass. Lawrence had his stick lifted by Larkin. And it's back to the leaf line. Here's Lilligren. To an open ring, he'll chase after it. Chop that. In the air, Justin Hall. Looks like he'll start as the seventh defenseman. Sounds like Detroit's going to start with three goaltenders on their roster, 12 forwards and eight blue liners. Dumped in by Keith Weber. Petrie handed it off, and, or Patrick Kane might have just taken it from him. There's Kane circling back. Out of Casper. Dropping it back to Mata. And on the second try, he plays it down into the leaf zone. Stolars for Nimala. Nice outlet to Cedric Pare. Bank pass for Binkin. Trebinkin tied up, but following up, here's Kalyanko. Around the boards, Leafs were trying to change. Weber had gone towards the bench and then stayed out in an icy call against Detroit. Yeah, here's really the challenge in these exhibition games. You know, there's just not the intensity. There's not the normalcy of what's at stake in a regulation. But you've got to produce it. And there's Craig Berube there. Come on, guys. We've got to start getting things going. It, it's hard to when you're a veteran guy to take it seriously but the young guys don't really Chris know how to do it necessarily you know the game doesn't just happen you got to find a way to make an impact each and every shift and that is the challenge for these players getting their first real chance to be in this situation it's Alex Nylander who signed a Marley contract sending it in Talbot for Edmondson jumping up there was Myers Philip Myers with close to 150 NHL games, many with Philadelphia, has made some noise in this training camp, but offside called at the Detroit line. They had a little chat with Brad Tur Living about Myers, and he was very complimentary of just, you know, another guy in that 26, 27 year range and looked like he would maybe be a regular. And I think for him, it's sort of been a little bit of a frustrating couple of years, but he's got that experience and he's got the ability to understand the game. And I just think if you look at especially with defensemen, you get a need, you know injuries are going to happen. You, you need a stable, a good defenseman who can play a role. And it might just be a stopgap, or you might find that the development continues on and he might find an opportunity to be in the lineup on an everyday position. Robertson kicks it back. Lilligren back to Robertson, back to Lilligren, and Talbot out at the top of the crease to stop that. Camp in behind the net. Here's Pacioretty. Back to Robertson, the lead goal scorer. David Camp's got it. Swooping in behind the net on the backhand, and that's stopped by Talbot with a penalty pending. A cross-checking call is upcoming. Pacioretty cross-checked by Mo Sider. Well, there's an example. We, we saw Craig Berube getting his team. Come on, we got to pick up the pace. Well, what does this line do? So veteran guys in Detroit camp and Pacioretty. Robertson does a nice job, and there's the battle in front. And really awkward fall for Pacioretty as he's trying to just 
Fox Cider out, and Cider goes underneath, and the call happens. So a really good offensive zone shift by that line creates another power play opportunity. So the Leafs one for two in the game, and now at 25% for the preseason. Four for 16, one shot on the power play, and that hit the back of the net off the stick of Nick Robertson. Second unit out right now, McMahon scoops a backhand in front. Remember when Bobby McMahon thought he scored his first NHL goal in this building, only to be taken back on a kicked-in call the, after review. The dreaded video review. The excitement of getting your first goal just evaporated. Rebecca played it in behind the net. It'll come around for Hall. And that plate passed Steves and down into the leaf zone. Let's see if this power play group that scored the first one can get a little spark here and two guys to watch is Cowan with the puck here and obviously Robertson with how hot he has been. Cowan got it to the line got it across to Pacioretty out of the reach of Robertson it'll be kept in by Cowan now Nebula across Pacioretty fires and Talbot's got it. Well, the one chance on that first power play came in tight and he said Bobby McMahon just a big body in front. I just think hesitated for a split second was going to drive it through instead got the quick little backhander up and Talbot in good position nothing there for him coming off a good year last year career high 15 goals and you look at the opportunity can he solidify a position probably not in the top six but can he be maybe at third line offensive thread and build off of a solid 15 goals that he had last year 15 and 52 did not start the season with Toronto until November the 11th Cowan back to Nimala in the middle here's Topi Nimala 12 assists in two World Junior games that got the lead attention when they drafted him Nimala good offensive prospect Robertson firing that on to Talbot boy the release is fun to watch isn't it, it, it is it but you, you just mentioned Nima up top there and this is where you get an opportunity to see you can watch a guy in practice but playing up against NHL defenders on the penalty kill it, it, just showing a lot of poise there and no real panic as he's distributed the puck pretty well late stages of the power play that one chipped into the leaf bench with seven seconds remaining in the cider penalty. Well, two quick passes open up Robertson again. He, you know where the puck is going to go. Robertson buys himself a little bit time up high. Nice read by Cowan, and we've seen him go low, but because of the distance that he had there, tried to go up and over the shoulder. Talbot had nothing to do with it. He was in good position and made the save. If you've been watching Robertson, though, as a goaltender, you're thinking low. He, he's really patented that quick little wrister five hole or as he scored tonight the side low at the five hole goal in Montreal Dennis Hildeby a teammate with the Marlies last year said he was raving about that shot and said I'm not sure I've ever stopped it in practice that's how reliable Robertson's five hole shot is so Detroit back at full strength Justin Hall with the puck. Up ahead it goes and to the attack. The speedy Valletta throws down by Myers. Mention Myers, it doesn't hurt that he's 6'6 six, six and 213. So it's another reason the Brad Trelubbing likes him. Brian, well, that's again just changing up the look. We talked about the success of this team in the regular season, but the makeup of the back end, and there's no question that there was a concerted effort to get a little bit bigger and get a little bit tougher. Lilligren shot and that's absorbed by Talbot. So the shots now even in the game. The Leafs with the lead as we approach seven minutes of the second. Boys in the intermission talking about how the Athletic might shake out. This was the interdivision standings last year. So if the Leafs start a challenge for the lead, they've got to be better within the division. Can Detroit? match what they did last year to help put them over the top. Yeah, yeah, that's really the dilemma here. If you're the Maple Leafs, you have to have that mindset of, okay, can we maybe win the division this year? You don't have to go to game seven on the road, and that could be the difference maker. You, you couple that division points that you just saw there with some of the weaker opponents that they've lost typically 
especially early in the season. And you're right for Detroit. They, there's a lot of thoughts that they can be closer. After, after being so close last year, just can they be as good as they were in the division this year? Here comes Tyler Mott wearing Brendan Shanahan's number 14. Unable to get a shot away at a lead feed for Steves. Here's Alex Steves, and he sent that wide. Rabai steps up along the boards for Steves. Harvard to Notre Dame. Steves, a Notre Dame grad, Rafai from Harvard. And here's Ben Chirac. Jeff Petrie ahead. First should mention Jeff's dad was a prominent member of the Detroit Tigers when they won the 84 World Series and now is a analyst on Detroit Tiger games and we will have the Tigers and the Guardians game one of the ALDS on Saturday afternoon on Sportsnet. Well, how about the Tigers? You, you know, you think of the Red Wings losing in, in a tiebreaker to not make the playoffs last year. Tigers had a 2% chance of making the playoffs in August and then all of a sudden went on a 31 and 13 down the stretch to not only make the playoffs and now 33 and 13 in their last 46. It's been quite a scary team and be fun to watch this next round as the Tigers try to keep things rolling. Senko lost his footing and Lawrence able to play that ahead. Cowan unable to reach the pass but following up here Keith Weber striding in. Another big defenseman. He's 6'7, 210. And the blue line got even bigger in Bracebridge over the last couple of days with Yanni Hockenpah joining the team for the first time on the ice. Yep. Another 6'7 giant on the blue line. Off the bench, it's a shot that maybe glanced off the shoulder of Talbot. Does Pacioretty let it fly? Knocked down behind the net. Camp goes after it against Casper. Leafs trying to buzz in the Detroit zone and flipped away by Tarasenko. Now Robertson, quick curl and back in. Here's Robertson firing it right on. Tied up there by Hall. Patch ready after it on the other side. Tried to cycle it back. That cut off. Played to the line. And it will come out. Well, another example for Robertson there, just how he can create some separation using his feet. You know, that quick little turn up in the neutral zone bought himself a couple of seconds, created a gap, and allowed him to get in the zone and get that shot. Three shots in the game for Robertson, nine in the preseason. David Camp got it. Centering pass, intercepted by Larkin. Out comes Alex to bring it. 27 goals in each of his last two years. Twice he scored 41. Sider with a bump on Parry at the line. Backed up there by Raymond. Jostling there with Parry and Leafs get control. That goes off Yarncroak and down in behind the Detroit net. Sider fanned on it. Parry on the four check. Down goes Sider. Up to the puck. Rabinkin feeds the point. Steered back around behind the net. Edmondson there. Talk about big defenseman. Edmondson at 6 6. Grabenkin holds the zone. Here's Grabenkin trying to duck past Sider. Nikita Grabenkin behind the net. Sandwiched by a pair of Red Wings, but now gets some help. There's an example of Grabenkin. Uh, uh, Craig Berube just likes his ability to use his size. He's doing a nice job protecting the puck and moving. and kept that play alive instead of the play dying with him. Yep, the top line of the Red Wings in their own zone, but now to bring it back, pass for Larkin got by him. It'll be knocked down by Raymond and flipped up onto the netting and out of play. We pass the midway mark of the second period. Good shift for Trebinkin and company. Leafs have the lead. In a power play goal in the first period. Leafs continue to lead one to nothing, but uh, the last few shifts starting to take over the game. They've outshot Detroit 9 2 in the second period. You know, this is what the exhibition games are all about. Sometimes when you have a veteran laden team like the Red Wings do right now, it's hard to inspire them to play with the same edge. It, we saw Craig Berube going on the previous commercial break really challenge his team and said, well, we got to get our legs going. And you saw about a five minute stretch there where 
the Leafs were able to put pressure and that's when you've got look down on your bench and you got a lot of guys who have an awful lot to prove. I think they've done a pretty good job of trying to make an impact there and it's been a pretty solid period where the ice has been tilted into the Detroit zone. Red Wings trying to change that here. Stolarz short side centering pass and the Leafs able to find it and Bobby McMahon will dump it out after it is Myers stepping up on the play and now he'll hustle back. And Greg Berube has challenged his blue line to step up on the play. Myers aggressive on that last sequence. No, and that's again the one of the abilities of Myers there is to cover a lot of ground. You know he's played 158 NHL games so it, it's not like he's not been here before doesn't know the reads but the opportunity only played five games in the NHL last year in Tampa 23 points in 61 in the American Hockey League but you've seen good flashes of good reads good job of protecting the puck to the outside and he's had a pretty solid game left momentarily in the first period after a shot block there's Berger trying to cut in then able to Get by Kokanen at the line. Mata shot through a screen off target. Now Tyler Mott unable to catch up to that. The puck comes across ice and the Leafs might have something here as Camp moves up, plays it to the net. Uh, Pacioretty just a step away from tipping that on Camp Talbot. You know, at Camp, he didn't make the shot that he wanted. Pacioretty was reading, okay, there was no passing lane to make. Watch at the top of your screen. So Pacioretty's gonna go to the outside and just try to get stick on the ice. And Camp, I think, thought, saw the idea, but that, instead of a hard pass off the bow, got right into the body there of Talbot, and it was an easy save with no rebound. Put that along the ice, it might be a rebound or off the side as Pacioretty was trying to get there quickly. Rare game for David Camp, who gets to assume the top line center role tonight just eight goals last year. Obviously not being counted on for offensive production, but they'd like it to be bumped up a little bit from there. Well, there's the question again is who's going to be playing center? <laughs> is it right? Is it William Nylander on the wing to start the season? It, it, if, if I had a say in it, I, I think that's the preference I would have. Here the Red Wings challenging with Casper back to the line. Cider shot hit a leg goes wide. Picked up by Yarncroft. He's knocked down. Off the boards up a hit for Grabeck and bodied by Cider. And play halted. I think a cross check yep. is going to be the call. And it's Kane again who's going to be arguing as he watches Rasmussen go into the box. Yarncroft having a talk with him. Kelly, Kane took that one earlier. He didn't like the call. As is that the original one? Because Edvinson, sorry, yes. Right on the numbers and what, three feet away from the boards. Dangerous position, and that's why the arm went up. So Edvinson makes his second trip. I don't know if the arm went up immediately because I, I sensed penalty, but I didn't think that call was coming. I think that's why Kane was jawing on his way too. He, he thought it was a little bit late. But here's this. Power play unit with camp as you mentioned this won't happen often in the regular season but he gets the start on the top power play here in this Leafs one for three Robertson out there again patch are ready Nibola looked good on the last power play and Robertson as well he'll kick it back to Nibola finds Robertson again into the middle and that pass doesn't reach Pacioretty. That was a great read by Larkin there. There's a little, just an area pass. Pacioretty with the lefty was going to be able to get a shot away, and Larkin came back, got the stick in the way, and made a good defensive effort. Much of the Leafs' time on the ice in Muskoka and Bracebridge yesterday was regarding special teams. A lot of power play, penalty kill work. Here's Camp back in. Dumping it back to the line. It does reach Cowan. Easton Cowan to the other side of the ice, but loses it, and that one fired into the benches. A minute seven remaining in the bleak power play. Now you see a little frustrated Cowan there. You, you're, you've already been out there, what, about a minute, and 
little bit of fatigue and you just watch the hesitation lost the puck a couple of times now you know you're trapped and you're in trouble and you know this kid's had the weight of the world on his mind he, he mentioned that last year he came in and was like all oh, lots to prove who's this kid and he just relaxed and played and he looks so energetic and this has been a much different training camp for him I, I, I think he's absorbed an awful lot of that pressure and you talk to anybody on the Maple Leafs organization trying to take that off of them. So just relax and ease yourself into it and get out and play and have some fun again. Sometimes easier said than done. But it has to be because obviously he's a much better player than he was a year ago. He had an old junior like season MVP in the regular season of the playoffs. And yet he was playing with kind of reckless confidence last year. And you can almost see him wearing it a little bit. You, you really can. I mean, and it's evident. And I, I like the fact that the Leafs still are aware of it and have been preaching to him. You, you don't worry about what might happen or if you're going to go down or not. Let's just have some fun. And you've, you've got the skills. And the skills only work if your confidence is there. And, and I, I think that's the key is get a little energy, get a little confidence back, and go out and just play. Final 10 seconds of the power play. Steve's won a board battle. It comes back to Kokanen. Into the corner. And a spin away is Nylander. Back to the line for Myers. Edmondson on the ice. Kokanen just gets it away before the back pressure came from Edmondson. Kept in again by Kokanen. Now McMahon trying to reel it in. And Detroit gets control. 5-10 left, second period, charging after it, Mott, and he's cut off there by Kokanen. Lawrence from his own zone. Up ahead, Paré, striding through center. Lawrence had it knocked off his stick. Myers had the delay and waited long enough for Lawrence to get back on side. Lawrence for the corner in front. Paré stopped by Talbot, out beyond the blue to challenge it. Good stop there to keep Detroit a shot away. Nice chance for Cedric Paré. Now Yarncrook goes after it. Played away by Berggren. Curling is Debrinket. Here comes Alex Debrinket down the ice. Debrinket in front, Dylan Larkin unable to handle the pass. It'll be Petrie. And Debrinket unable to reel that in. Camp trying to clear, kept in by Petrie. Now Larkin, Raymond, back to the line for Petrie. The Petrie shot, glanced off somebody in front. Petrie after it again. Here is Kane right on, and Stolarz has got that. So the Red Wings come back with a challenge, but the best chance of late, Cedric Pare robbed by Cam Talbot. Play. Watch all the puck watching by the penalty killers. Robertson in that perfect position, the quick little release underneath the glove and in. And another example here of early on in this young season of penalty killing and learning. The, the Detroit Red Wings not keeping their eye on where Robertson is. He's done a good job of finding the opening and getting those good chances. One of them that he was able to capitalize on. Robertson with 12.08 so far in the game and those three shots. and. 12-8, the most by any forward of the game so far. Patrick Kane, rink wide, looking for Tarasenko. Lilligren back for the Leafs. Casper picked off that pass, gets it to Tarasenko. Knocked away by Stolarz. Casper back on it. I can do our good friend Mickey Redman, who mentioned that young Danielson, the Nick Danielson, likely to play tomorrow in the spot that Casper is tonight. And those two young centers challenging for spots. Here's Nylander unable to pull the trigger against Ben Girat. Now talking with Sean Horkoff between periods, assistant GM, and really the GM of Grand Rapids, and just said they have about five or six of those young guys who are going to be a, what, a two to three years away, but lots of good prospects and 
Lots of good optimism, and you've seen it in display in some of their good young players. You just hang out with the Michigan State guys. Yeah, the, uh, Spartans, you got to continue to support, especially in Michigan Wolverine come country around here. There's Lawrence crashing in on the four check against Edmondson, absorbed it, one hands it ahead. And away goes Cop. He's a Michigan guy. On to the right side, Rasmussen. He leans in. Christian Fisher spins off. A penalty pending. Rasmussen a shot. Bouncing through. Cleared away by the Leafs and the penalty call upcoming. So with 2-11 remaining, second period, Detroit will go to the power play. Well, and this is one where Cade Weber just, just lost a little bit of his balance. And Strong so when you're leaning on and you remember it, what a big guy he is at that 6-7 mode. And you get up top around the shoulders, stopped his legs from moving. Looked like he was doing okay, but Rasmussen does a nice job. Look at he's pushing from the outside and then just coming around that one right there as the left arm got up on that left shoulder and gives the Red Wings power play an opportunity. So their second of the game did not register a shot on their opening power play in the first period. Larkin to break it, Raymond. Kane on the point, and Sider. Macy Garrett Gustafson on the point on the power play when the regular season starts. Although Moritz Sider may have something to say about that. I think he's going to want that position, don't you? Down low it goes, centering it for Kane. It hopped over his stick. Into the middle, Larkin. And a wooden timer, and Stolarz across. Doesn't get to break it anything to shoot at, and the Leafs clear. Chris, there's another example of Stolarz. Just, just the calmness of tracking that puck across. It, it's so important to know where the pass, and when it starts, he slid across, he was square to the shot, and made just a solid save. Just shaking his right arm there while the puck went up the ice. Not sure if that might have caught him in a bad spot. I think Debrinka got the shot he wanted. Do you see a puck mark right there <laughs> underneath the milk sign? And this is just a seam pass that's open. But watch just calmly across. Good efficiency of movement there. And you're right, it caught him right on that shoulder. But he was there quickly and in position to make the save. And Sider across and a blast that missed the target. Keane comes up with it. Bump back to Sider. And across to the far side to Brinkett. Sider, Kane, his shot blocked. Fronted there by Rafai. Swatting at it is Robertson, trying to outwork Kane along the boards. Comes back behind the net to bring it to Larkin. Final minute, second period. 45 seconds remaining in the power play. Centering pass, knocked away by Lilligren. Saved by Larkin. Tried to fire it across and didn't reach Kane. Puck stays in the zone and now Kane's got it. Down low into the slot for Raymond tied up. Leafs get it out. That was a good read by Rafai. He saw Raymond and the route that he was taking got in there with the stick and didn't allow a shot. Keen back in. Here's Raymond who led the Red Wings in. Points last year. A block by Rafai on the shot by Keen. And Rafai clears it to wrap up a great penalty kill shift for number 83. Two shots on the power play, but they don't break through, and the Leafs now have killed 18 straight in the preseason. Fires across, it's tapped to the line, kept in by Sherratt. And the horn sounds to end the second period. No further scoring, Nick Robertson's power play goal in the first, holding up, shot 17-16 through two in favor of the Leafs. David Amber, Nick, Justin, and Elliot when we come back.
on the Kenzie. Nick, that's four preseason games, four goals for yourself. As a goal scorer, when the puck's going in like that, just what does the confidence feel like when you have it on your stick? That's great. I mean, uh, I'm fortunate to have the pucks go in. Obviously, you build on that and uh, be maybe more comfortable and shooting the puck and playing a game, and I'm happy with it. I want to talk about your shot from that top of the circle spot. A lot of guys you see try to tend to go high. You've had a couple in the preseason where you went low. Do you, you feel maybe you can catch goalies off guard with that low shot? Yeah, I just think it's what the goalie's given me. And uh, what I'm reading off of, you know, how fast the puck's coming to me from that pass from Cowboy. So I just go based on that and fortunately win in. Nick, thanks a lot for the time. Thank you. All right, there's Sean McKenzie with the goal scorer, Elliot Friedman, Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, a little Kipper and Bourne action there, and David Amber. Uh, great to have you along. Listen, somebody, somebody the, tell the Red Wings the game starts. Yeah, I was oh. going to say, few regulars. The, the Red Wings have what could be close to their opening night oh, yeah. roster. The Leafs, just a few regulars sprinkled in. One of them, though, Timothy Lilligram. We want to walk through his situation here because they obviously marked him down, so we're going to get you in this game. Former first-round pick, uh, just 25 years of age, but what does this all mean to you? Well, I think uh, you know what you're watching for here is what's Craig, Craig Berube going to think? He's looking at these guys. He hasn't coached him before. What do I get out of this guy? What's the game state where I use this player? And for Timothy Lilligram, and I just, I haven't seen it, you know, in the playoffs most years for the Leafs. They've, they haven't been able to find a regular spot for him. And, you know, tonight it's like, show this guy something, your new coach. And he comes out first shift, you know, a weak backhand rim that Detroit ends up getting a chance on. It's like, all right, Lily, let's let's get him back next shift. Doesn't gain the red. You know, ices the puck. We're two and a half minutes into the hockey game here. And it's just... I'm waiting for Lilligren to show them something. What do you do for your $3 million over the next two years? And I think his, the best thing he has going for him is that he's right-handed. He can handle the puck a little bit here. And, you know, nice little backhand pass. We're trying here. We're trying to find something for Lily. But here's a nice play. He gets off a one-timer. But I just think he's in a position on this team where he's right-handed. He's going to be, you know, he's going to get opportunity because of that. But as they look at their salary cap and try to get better, is this a guy they're going to see a fit for? I'm not so sure about that. Well, and he's getting pushed now because we know that the Leafs made some significant moves uh, during the season. UFA signings, depth on the blue line, and he's starting to get pushed by other players as well. Marshall Rafai, a guy that's been in the Marlies, doesn't seem over-assuming as a player, but quietly has been very effective this training camp. And even tonight, uh, you know, simple things. He's six foot two, 200 pounds on the penalty kill. This guy gets involved, mm -hmm. and he's not intimidated. And so far, I think he's put himself in a position to start thinking about you know, six, seventh, or eighth defenseman. So Can he curve a stick the other way? Can he get a blowtorch <laughs> out? <laughs> and he went to Harvard. Like, sure, he went to Harvard. <laughs> no, no trading Does that places. Help or no? And, oh, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great movie. The best, <laughs> one of the best movies of all time. I, you know, the one thing I was thinking about was Mike Fuda made a point in his radio show this week with Marchese is that. You know, if you're the veteran who goes on the road for this game, they're trying to tell you something. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I watch your pack there with Lilligren, I, and I think about he's the guy who's on the road in this game. What are they saying? Yeah, step up. Can you be a leader yeah. for us? We we need something. We want more. something. Yes. And Rafai doing all those blue collar things that you know Craig Berube loves mm -hmm. and appreciates. So we'll have to see how this all shakes down. Uh, all right, the last six teams uh, from the Eastern Conference that made their way to the Stanley Cup Final, all of them reside in the Atlantic Division. The Leafs have made the playoffs eight straight years. There's no guarantee, though. It's such a tough division, which means it's paramount how they get off to start this season. You don't want to be chasing. Here's how it shakes down. Starting next Wednesday at the Habs, followed up the next night against the Devils with the Penguins, the Kings, the Rangers. What do you guys want to see? For, let's start with you, Elliot. First five games for the Toronto Maple Leafs, what do you want to see knowing that this is the schedule they're staring down? You know, in our first regional show, Justin made a comment that has stuck with me since, and that is that they've never won the division, like in this group of players. And, you know, you can say the regular season doesn't matter, but it does matter if you set a goal. Like everyone talks about, you know, they don't have to prove anything until the playoffs. I really like what Justin said because it gives you a goal mm -hmm. to establish in the regular season, and in theory, it gets you a better playoff matchup. That's what I'm looking at this year. I would love to see them take a run at that and say, we want to win the division. I, I think it gives you a, a regular season target that gives you something to play for. I'm yeah. just not convinced that it's going to be a team that's getting shot out of a cannon here. Mm -hmm. I, I think the makeup 
over last season to this year and then implementing a system and a style of play for Craig Bruby may take a little bit of time. But they do have internal competition, which I really like. There's, it's not as set in stone once you get past the core guys. I think that'll create some good play early from uh, you know fringe players. Well, it all starts for real, of course, next Wednesday, Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey, the Leafs and the Habs in Montreal. Can't wait for that one. Uh, lots it of action. It was the Dukes. Yeah. It was the Dukes. Looking good. Looking good, Valentine. All right. So, <laughs> Mets and Brewers. This is a winner take all, guys. Bottom six. What a pull you made. Man. <laughs> Bottom six, Mets, Brewers. This is over on Sportsnet. Loser go home. Winner moves on to take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Straight ahead. Highlights from around the NHL. We're checking in on Love the Love that movie. Bruins. Sorry, Diego. Get no respect. Billy Ray. Looking good. <laughs> And Patrice Bergeron, first game in Quebec City since 2018, the ceremonial puck drop. Remember, no Jeremy Swayman, so it's Jonas Corposalo getting the start. Boston fans, take 64, wow. go out. It's not even there. I was going to say, not even playing tonight. I think Corposalo would take 64. At least Cam nearly spelt the sign right. <laughs> Elliot, you just interviewed this guy, right? Quentin Byfield? going to have a big year. Well, he's big year. He's having a big highlight here. That's his first of the period. He's not done there. Moments later, they're just announcing his first goal, and there's another Lebu. Those are so nice. Sort of the helmets. All right, let's check out the Penguins and the Blue Jackets out in Columbus. Cole Sillinger, just a nice give and go with Ken Johnson. They've got a lot of young talent. Sillinger buries it right there, and it's one nothing. But then Pittsburgh, what do you guys think of the Penguins this year? I just don't know what to, to think. I'm a buyer, but I got made fun of that for what I mentioned earlier. So. <laughs> Valtteri Pustinen ties it at one. Pens drying even. And finally, the Devils and the Flyers, and a lot of expectations surrounding the Devils. And this is another one of these division battles that can get pretty nasty. Just ask Samuel Laberge and Sawyer Bolton. And Bolton oh, eats one there. Seems okay, though. Does it? Uh, well, I don't know. Nah, tough fight. And then John uh, Randall Avon past the defender, buries it. 21 year old, first of the preseason. That's pretty nice. That was me on B. It's five hole. I'm going to get you back out to uh, Little Caesars Arena. Chris Cuthbert, Craig Simpson, Sean McKenzie, third period coming up. Stolar's perfect so far. Division rivals clash in a preseason matchup. It's Oilers and the Canucks tomorrow at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Sportsnet. The Maple Leafs preseason is winding down. And yesterday, Craig Brewer is asked if his opening night roster is set. Apparently not for the game. He said, we still have some competition going on for sure. Now, front and center in that competition has been Nick Robertson. He comes in after what can only be described as a tumultuous offseason. Plenty of trade talk, plenty of rumors. But he has proven that he can do exactly what he's supposed to do, and that score goals at the NHL level. Another one tonight. His confidence is growing. He continues to show this Maple Leafs team and Craig Rube why come October 9th he deserves a spot on that opening night roster, guys. There will be some intrigue. A couple of players in this lineup on PTOs that Craig Berube has to somehow fit in the lineup, and so does. Brad Trelevin cap wise. <laughs> yeah, cap is always the issue, isn't it? But you know, that's that's what's sort of intriguing and exciting in a exhibition season when you have a new coach. You know, everybody's got to make a first impression. You know he's got ideas of guys as we got a early penalty here against the Maple Leafs, so an opportunity for Detroit to go on the power play as Pacioretty goes off. But when you got a new coach, it just changes everything. Even the veteran guys, like the core four guys who going into their ninth year, all of a sudden have a different voice. There's the little stick into the hands. And that changes things. That makes this year a little bit different. You, you got to get to know the coach if you're a veteran guy and understand what he believes in and what he wants. And if you're a young guy, you got a fresh slate. No preconceived notion of what Robertson can do for a guy like Berube. Pass picked up by Camp. Third power play of the game for Detroit. 0 for 2. Look dangerous on the last one late in the second period. In behind the net to break it. Keen up top to Sider on this near side 
Ford to brick it. Larkin in the slot. And here's Sider shooting, and Raymond with the tip, and Solar's got a piece of that. Back to Sider. Calder Trophy winner, fired right on. Rebound, Yarncroak, a backhand clear. Stopped by Sider. Good keep at the line. Dylan Larkin. Sider looking for a stick in front. Raymond unable to corral that. It's played to the line, and it bounces past Sider down the ice. Boy, another good play there by Myers. Just attacked that puck quickly in the corner, made sure he got the change, and got some fresh troops out there. One good save there by Stolarz as Sider, as you mentioned, nailed that one right from the middle of the slot. Rasmussen unable to take the pass. He's got five shots on goal for Detroit. Puck played to the Red Wing line. And now Petrie. He'll lug it in himself. Played it around to the near side, and it will reach Peregrin. Into the middle, Valeno kicks it back to Petrie. The second unit has a half minute remaining. Centering pass in the skates of Lilligren. Picked up here by Bergren. Back to the line. Petrie rifled that high. He can let it fly. Tarasenko. Rasmussen. Bergren. Joe Valeno up high. Gives it back to Bergren. That pass broken up by Robertson, knocked down at the line. Great hand eye by Petrie, not a high stick. Bergeron shooting, and Stolarz stopped that through a screen. Bergeron along the boards. Played back to Petrie, loads up and fires again. That will stick to Anthony Stolarz. Well, lots of zone time as the power play able to move it around, but when the good chances arrived, here's the one from the top sider. Just finds the traffic in front, a little tip and off the post as Raymond in tight and Sid Myers. It, it's just how aggressively can you get there quickly? Raymond thought he had some time instead, a good stick and cleared the zone. And another solid power play by this edition of the Maple Leafs. So it's 19 straight penalty kills in the preseason for the Maple Leafs. Again, 76.9 during the regular season, and it was an issue in round one against Boston. And a lot of new people. <laughs> yeah, well, especially in this game. And from a coaching perspective, you've got both special teams, new voices as well. Savard on the power play, Lambert on the penalty kill. So that'll be interesting to chart as well. Different ideas, different thoughts, and so far it's been... At least the penalty kill part's been a pretty good part of this preseason. Here's Tyler Mott over the line with Cop. Mott, another Michigan product. Played with JT Cocker and Kyle Connor on the line for the Wolverines. Larkin behind the net. Koken and jostling there with Mott. Now Kokanen plays it around to the far side and Quillen got there, unable to clear. Raymond for Larkin. A little more determination in the Detroit lineup here in the third. Raymond looking to get them even, but taken out of the play by Myers and the Leafs get it out to center. Approaching four minutes of the third. Larkin's pass intercepted by Camp. We're talking about roster moves that will have to be made. The rosters have to be set by 5 o'clock on the, October the 7th. So it should be an interesting five days, particularly following the final preseason game between these two teams in Toronto on Saturday. Marshall Rafai's got time and space, and they'll work out to center, red line, and in. Around it comes to Pacioretty. That flipped up high and onto the screen. I mean, think of the difference now. You, you've got, you know, the questions. Has Pacioretty got a deal already done? Is he going to be here? You mentioned Rafai and even Robertson. The, the difference now is having to clear waivers. I mean, for Robertson, it's worked against him so often that he's the one guy that could go down. You didn't have to worry about losing him. Well, now it's a much more difficult decision and probably ironically works in his favor this time to stick around. I mean, his play has done that as well, especially in these last three games. 
but that waiver the idea of losing him for nothing I, I just think is unacceptable isn't it so you're talking about I mean a trade just to just to get an asset instead of losing somebody yeah, there's going to be an uncomfortable loss I, I just think it, it happens during training camp and that's why typically sometimes you'll see GM's do it earlier here's Lawrence steaming in and Stopped there by Talbot. Feeds the point out of the reach of Nimelo. Especially the goaltenders, right, Chris? You try to slide one down when everybody's got too many and hope that maybe he can go down without losing a goaltender. Both these teams are going to have those issues. Detroit with a slew of goaltenders and the Maple Leafs with Matt Murray in the mix as well. There's Valeno trying to get it to the net. Picked up by Mott. Mata Hall off the inboards and ricocheted right in front. No red wing stick there, and the Leafs are able to work it out. It's a slick pass by Cowan, and now it's played down into the Detroit zone. Shots 20 to 18 in favor of Detroit. Leafs have shot the Red Wings 12 8 in period two. Bergeron on the board check, trying to tie up Kokanen. Kokanen stays with it. Up for Grabenkin. Working along the boards. And now Kelly Yarko. Knocked there by Quillen down behind the Detroit net. Moved by Talbot. Out comes Kopp. That pass denied by Quillen. And now Grabenkin back to regroup it for the Leafs. Philippe Myers. Backhanded in by Quillen. And a loose puck. Quillen, a quick shot. And Talbot made that stop while looking behind him. Quillen with a chance to give the Leafs a little more breathing room. Sider tried to play it in front, and it deflected off Lilligren. Stolarz had to be sharp on that. Boy, did he ever get a little reaction there to kick the leg out and make that save. Now it's Alex Nylander playing it across. Here's a shot with wide off the stick of Rafai who moved up. Rafai a little offense last year in the postseason for the Marlies. He scored three goals in three games with the Marlies in their short playoff run. And center camp unable to take it away from Raymond. In comes Petrie. Drops for Larkin. Dylan Larkin, who scored his first career NHL goal against Toronto to the line. That shot blocked in. Got another Toronto penalty. As Talbot went to the bench for an extra attacker, we'll see the fourth power play of the night. There's the giveaway by Talbot that led to a chance by Quillen. Gabe Weber in the box for the second time in the game, a cross-checking call that gives Detroit its fourth power play of the night. You know, that split-second decision in front, you're just battling for the possession. A quick little turnaround here is Raymond, and it's that little extra right on the top of the numbers there. You saw Weber, the earlier penalty was that grab and around the net that time, just a battle in front opens up an opportunity for a power play that's been pretty sleepy, hasn't it, Chris? You know, this is basically the power play of the Detroit Red Wings for the year, and this is their opportunity to try to get something going. Starts with a Kelly Yarncroke defensive zone faceoff win, but Red Wings get it back. Around for Debrinkit. His pass ends up at center and a race for it. David Camp's on it. Camp with Yarncroke on the first penalty kill unit. Talbot has to eat it, and... He didn't want that face off in the Red Wings zone. Like two smart plays. The veteran guys, as you mentioned, the two in the lineup start both Camp and Yarncroke. And it's just relentless there for Talbot. You saw Talbot was hoping for a flyby and keep the play alive. Instead, the veteran move and stop in front. Don't allow that to happen. And now you got an offensive zone face off for the penalty kill. Sider working his way and kicks it back to Larkin. Kane gains the zone. 
On to the right flank, Raymond. That pass denied by Kokonen. Sider gives it back to the captain. Larkin through the high slot. Sider across. Keen in his spot. Larkin in the slot. Debrinket shot it wide. Nice set play by the Red Wings, and Debrinket just missed. He was looking for a pass there to Raymond. Raymond missed it on the doorstep. You know, it's one of those plays that if you're in sync, he gives a little tap to Raymond there. Raymond knew that he just missed that as a creative play that didn't quite execute. Both Raymond goals in the preseason were on the power play. Here's Tarasenko in. Voleno sends it to the end boards. It'll be Berggren around to the near side. Rasmussen cycling it back for Berggren. 15 goals in his rookie year. Dropped off last year and fighting for a job is Jonathan Berggren. Moleno knocked off the puck. Kept alive by Peregrine. Rasmus behind the net, jolted by Lilligren. There's Tarasenko. It's probably the best chance of the night. Petrie fired. Stoller's bumped in the, in the crease. It comes to the line, and Detroit keeps it alive. Final 10 seconds. Rasmus and centered it. it. Missed the stick of Valeno all the way down the ice. Uh, how about that play with Stolarz? He gives a, gives a whack to Rasmussen there after he got contact in front and did a great job with his stick to poke it away as well and then was yelling at the ref. He wanted a penalty against Rasmussen. Instead, only got a little bit of a hit back. Four straight road kills for the Leafs tonight. 20 for 20 in the preseason. And continue the lead approaching. 10 minutes of the third. Red Wings a little momentum off the penalty kill. A good shoulder there by Pacioretty on Mott in front. It'll come back to the line. Hall put it through the crease. Battle along the boards comes loose and it's open and firing it around. And past Robertson and Hall, the length of the ice. It's an icing call against the Leafs. Yeah, you gotta like the compete level in this around the net and Anthony Stolarz is I, I think had a great night he, he's been all around but watch in front after he got knocked down he, he does a nice job the puck moving on the side shot to the slot and there's that missed pass and here he is in front you know he gets a little bit of a contact there wants a call doesn't get it but then takes things back into his own hands it's just a little bit of a chop Good job of the ref there not calling the penalty Stolarz has stopped 45 of 47 in the preseason a couple of half games and going the distance here tonight patch ready will send it down as this will be played by talbot leafs will get a change up ahead for larkin on comes lawrence quickly on him cowan plays it back to nimala in front of the leaf net he'll backhand it ahead mcmahon unable to corral that Quick transition back in comes Larkin shooting up high on Stolarz. He can get down on his pad and still get out of the net. Yeah, exactly. That height just sets an advantage, isn't it? Rock moves up. Lawrence turns with it and he'll skate out. Waterloo product will flip it in and get to the bench on a chain. Work back into the leap zone where Lilligren plays it past Larkin. McMahon across and Rafai dumps it out to center. Simon Edmondson paired tonight with Moritz Sider. Cedric Parre back for Toronto. Timothy Lilligren takes a look. Onto the left wing. Yarncroft trying to spin off the check of Sider. In after Parry in front for Bacon. Stopped by Talbot. Nice pass by Parry and for Bacon comes close. Back the other way and that's broken up by Yarn Croak. Oh, what a shift by Yarn Croak. Great job coming back, but he made that play possible earlier. Here's a chance and Stolarz again with a show stopping club save. Off oh, Terra Seco again. Look at the look there. We saw it earlier in that first period. Well, another beauty. Tarasenko in all alone, just right at the hash marks as this pass comes. Tries to go top shelf. No way. He 
team and a goaltender just trying to find your way. Boy, Anthony Stolarz has done his part during this regular season. He's only allowed two goals on the 69 shots that he's allowed, and he's had some beauties tonight. The head to head against his former teammate Tarasenko. You saw the early glove save, and here's the latest addition as he looks right into the eyes as Tarasenko, but Stolarz has looked sharp, he's looked active, and he's looked confident in the crease. 959 save percentage as that puck deflects out of play in the preseason for Stolarz. We expect it'll be the entire game for Joseph Wall on Saturday. Everybody's expected Wall to be the starter on Wednesday in Montreal, but Stolarz is certainly uh, saying, giving Craig Berube something to think about well, anyway. Yeah, and again, it, it's first impression, right? For, for Berube, it's, it's like, what do you know about the guy? Who, who do you feel confident in? Doesn't have the history of Wall. And I know from a team perspective, you come in with a game plan. But Stolarz came in with a 1 7 1 9 23 in the 70 minutes of exhibition time. And it'll be interesting to see. I would expect, as you said, Wall to play all of Saturday. But Stolarz has done his part to maybe earn the right to be the starter Wednesday in Montreal. A big hit by Myers stepping up on Mata. Mata hanging in and sealing the boards. Backed up there as Berggren tried to swing it through and the Leafs end up with a puck. Philippe Myers up ahead. Steve's tagged at the Detroit line by Mata. Got it in and hits to the bench on a change. Under seven to go here in the third period. Leafs holding on to that. 1-0 lead on a power play goal by Nick Robertson. Fourth of the preseason. Cop turns it back to Sider. Edmondson shooting. And that is fronted by Weber. Rasmussen trying to get it through to Fisher. And it's redirected. One hand by Lawrence inside the Detroit line. Up ahead for Cop. Red Wings invade once again, but they're offside. One thing that's been impressive in this game, and especially now in the third period with a one goal lead, you, you look at these two teams on paper and you say, well, the, the advantage is clearly Detroit. But this Leaf group has done a nice job of defending well. They haven't just been sitting back. And what's been noticeable is their ability to win those 50 50 puck battles. I mean, they haven't been hemmed in here as you know, Detroit's going to try to push down by one. It's been a pretty solid job defensively from a group of six defensemen that is the boys we're talking about in intermission. Timothy Lilgren is the only real everyday NHLer back there. Lilgren on the ice here just going over 20 minutes in the game on this shift. As for camp got by him Robertson trying to catch up to it. Digging after it against Sherratt. Around it goes for Larkin. Top lines out against each other. Sherratt onto the right wing for Raymond. Raymond fired it across to break it. Tied up there. Robertson able to knock him off stride as he backtracks again. There's another progress for Robertson. He, you know, he almost took a penalty there, but he knew exactly where he needed to be defensively. Now he's back the other way. Robertson scores! He's got two tonight. He's got five in the preseason. And again, after a great defensive play. That's back to back. He did it on the power play where he came back defensively, maybe saved the goal. There's Leaf fans here in this building. But you're trying to make an impact on this coaching staff and the general manager. Well, you're dead tired. OK, get back, get back. Never too late to come back to the front of the net. Doesn't take a penalty. Turns the play over. Does a nice job of boxing out. And then beats his man back the other way. We could see how dead Sherratt was. Both the legs are burning, but this is a goal scorer's goal. As a left-hander coming on that side, Talbot slides across thinking a shot's coming, and he just calmly pulls it by and puts it in the net. Not Talbot. just five goals, but five consecutive goals by Toronto. Robertson with Pacioretty with the setup. Here's Trebekin. Myers. And that will be held by Talbot. Well, 89 came into camp trying to make an impression. And that he has.
Well, he's the offensive story of the preseason for Toronto. Most goals in a preseason by a leap since 2005. Austin Matthews had six in 2021. Matthews has had five in two other years. Tavares with five, and now Nick Robertson with five. And in what's his fourth preseason game? And in what fashion? As you mentioned, the five in a row, two of them game winners, and you need the Red Wings to score a pair here. Otherwise, it'll be three game winning goals. Go, 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 go. That's pretty good impact at a time when it's critical for him to be noticed. He has. Mott noticed again, or sorry, Stolarz noticed again as Mott has him. Puck behind the net, and Quillen trying to move it ahead. Mott on it once again, and now the Leafs get control. Nylander plays it ahead, and out at center, it's turned over. There's another example of Quillen. I mentioned, you know, good scorer in college, but also a fine defender. And he did his job as the centerman down low, did an excellent job of reading that play. Good stick, got his team out of trouble. Here's a Detroit chance and Stolarz with the stop. Or Marco Casper, the youngster for Detroit, vying for a position and nearly got Detroit on the board. Yeah, Casper did a nice job of buying himself a little time and walking in as he showed good patience. But what you've seen from Stolar in this game is just the calmness. His positioning has been excellent. There's another example of at the top of his crease. We mentioned the big body. You already don't see much of the net, but when you're out there aggressively challenging, it's, it's even more daunting for the shooter. You don't see any white in between the goalposts. And there's another good job of being in the right place and making a nice save. He's been excellent. 4-10 remaining. Camp and Larkin dueling. Along with Lawrence now and Yarncroke. So Craig Berube's got what would be a checking shutdown line together here. Trying to protect his two-goal lead. Six on five. With Talbot on the bench, keen shooting, and that may have hit Tarasenko. Around for Debrinket. Into the corner it goes, and back to Debrinket. Setting up in the net front is Larkin. It comes back to Sider. Here's for it, Sider, and the one timer blocked. Nice block again by Rafai. Kept in at the line by Debrinket. There's Myers, so it's Myers and Rafai. Rafai up with it. Bounce to the line, kept it again, and Rafai down, and a penalty coming up. And was that Tarasenko? No, it was Larkin coming Larkin. through. It just the bad timing for Larkin is just an excellent play and a good battle by Rafai. He was battling for the loose puck, turning around. Larkin coming back at him, and the timing of the flyby. I, I didn't see an arm coming up or trying to headhunt, but the end result was there. You mentioned the veterans up front. Well, how about the back end? Myers again and Rafai. And Rafai does it once again. Doesn't allow this one to come through. Takes it on the leg. But watch as Larkin's coming through at the last second. Oh, he did get him up high. Yeah, check to the head there. He right on the shoulder pad as Rafai is trying to turn around. He's in a vulnerable spot. He's not even looking. He doesn't even see Larkin. And that one. Well, we can't get it's through a, a preseason game without geez, a, I know. a hit that will cause a lot of discussion. Good to see that Rafai is okay. They just called it a two minute. And yes, very good. Rafai's had an excellent game. And good to see him back up. So the Leafs on the power play once again. Robertson's on the ice. Called for it, gets it. Camp in the slot. Patcher ready. Lorgan's got it on this side, and there's Pacioretty. Set up Nick Robertson on the insurance goal, at least for now. Down low, back to Robertson, and Talbot stopped that loose in front. Talbot able to knock that away from the front of the net. Retrieved by Pacioretty. Cycles it back, and can't let it go for Lilligren. Finds Robertson. David Camp. Patcher ready, shooting, and Talbot's got that short side. 
That one squeezed underneath the arm. You can see Talbot felt that one under in his elbow as Pacioretty tried to muscle one through at the other end. It was Robertson on the other side did a nice job with a short side shot as well. For Pacioretty, no shooting or passing lane was open. He knew he had a body in front. Maybe if a rebound comes there, but a nice job of Cam Talbot holding that one on. Couple of assists for Max Pacioretty in the game. And five points in the preseason for 67 on a PTO. By the way, Detroit released Alex Chase on from the PTO. They have Austin Watson. Here's Lawrence in, finds Cowan. Easton Cowan. Back to Nimala. Myers has it, shoots it. That blocked. Into the shin guards. And Myers broke his stick. Sherratt with the shot block out at center. Gets past Moth all the way down on Stolars. Under a half minute remaining in the Larkin penalty. Rafai back out. Cowan stopped up at center by Raymond. And Cade Weber retreats back behind his net. Along with her fry, a little team <laughs> meeting back there. <laughs> a little traffic jam. <laughs> Almost had a three car collision there. Ali Yarnstroke, Marshall Reply sends it in. Penalty done. And Talbot will be leaving the net as soon as Detroit can get possession down in Toronto territory. Larkin lost it though. There's Parre on the four check. Sent ahead and Rasmussen has been one of the best Red Wings tonight. Does roll it in. Talbot gets to the mid. Extra attacker is on. Swept around by Myers. Pare there as well, but it's kept in by Rasmussen. Now Patrick Kane. 88. Sider across to bring it on this near side. Down low. Raven. Stopped by Stolars. Leafs get a clear off the stick of Rafai, it's an icing call against Toronto. You see Stolarz talking to Rafai there, saying, hey, don't worry about it. You know, that two-goal lead, he's having a good conversation, and now with Myers, his two defense, it speaks volumes, doesn't it? You, you said that key penalty kill time, you had Myers and Rafai again in position, and here with the goaltender out again, with the icing not able to make a change, as Kokanen tries to come out, but that's, that's not going to happen. But those two defenders that have had done a great job. Philip Myers is another guy they may not want to try and slip through waivers. Well, they would like to slip him through yeah, well, yeah, what if they had to. Maybe unlikely. You don't want to lose him. Well, I think they've been happy with his progress in tonight's game would be a a good addition to that. The Brinkett shot, and that goes wide, trying to shoot around the block of Rafai. Raymond Kent, kick it off his skeet, play to the line, Siders there. Now it's to Brinkett. Raymond missed the pass, reloads for to Brinkett. Siders shooting, Stolars to stop, the rebound, knocked wide by Larkin, in tight, and Anthony Stolars will register the shutout Kicking out 30, and Nick Robertson took care of the offense here tonight as the Leafs moved to three, one and one in the preseason. You know, there's so much of the offense for Robertson. What a great run it's been, but defensively, the, the young D that really were solid here in a road game, and Anthony Stolarz, I, I think he was the story. Solid right from the beginning, and he brings this thing home for the 30 save shutout. So the Leafs with one more preseason game back home Saturday against Detroit. Our preseason is done. Scotia Wednesday night hockey is next. It'll begin with Hockey Central at 6.30 Eastern, followed by the Leafs in Montreal. That's the way to start the season. Followed by Winnipeg Edmonton and Calgary Vancouver. Those are the two late games on a great opening night, October 9th. Final score here tonight, 2-0. Nick Robertson with two more, five on the preseason, another game winner. 2-0 the final, so long from the Motor City.